uh, hey, I got you on a camp, and I'm gonna give you a call back here in a couple days and give you all the information. So he called me back and said, I got some bad news for you. You've been bumped off the camp. And I was like, oh man. And I was like, you know, of course, questioning myself, and what did I do? Was I not good enough? You know, what, whatever. And then he said, you know, it's strictly a political thing. It has nothing to do with you. Um, we're, it, it's going to work out. I'm, I'm going to. I've been promised that I'm that that you will be on one in the future. So just be ready and trust me on this. And I said, okay. And then sure enough, a month later, my phone rang. Again, it was Jim Cornette. He said, uh, I got you in a camp, and this time you're not getting bumped off. So don't, uh, so don't do anything to embarrass me. And I was like, I won't. I'm, I'll, I'll make you proud for sure. So I came in, and before the end of the week was up, I, uh, they signed me to a contract. Three, four months after that, I was on t on TV and on pay per view. It was actually a funny story how I found out about the Brood. Because I was, uh, at the time, Adam was just starting on television and uh, as, as Edge, and I had my developmental contract, and I was just, you know, at home, and they told me to keep doing my, my bookings that I already had for myself, so I was doing those, and then at the end of each month, I was going down, and I was doing the, the training camps um, at the WWE, WWF headquarters at the time. I was at home one night and I was I flipped Raw and I started watching Raw. And I was going about to, to watch Raw about an hour before the show started. Um, and my phone rang and I picked it up and it was Adam. And he said, uh, look, I got to give you a heads up. He said, you didn't get this call. I said, okay. <laughs> he, said, he said, they're talking about putting you with, with Gangrel. And he had just come on TV and he was really hot at the time and had an amazing character, amazing ring music. Just every, the, the, whole, the whole thing was, was, was amazing. As far as being quiet, um, on screen or in the, in the ring, as far as uh, interview segments go, you know, I think that the, the character I was portraying at the time was, was more of a quiet, kind of mysterious guy. And to be honest with you, I don't think that anybody realized that I could talk. And to be honest, I don't know if I could myself, or I didn't know if I could myself because I never really had a lot of experience doing it. Um, you know, I did it a couple times on some indie shows and stuff and it wasn't very good, but um, you know, I, I really wanted the chance to, to be able to do it. I was nervous about it and I knew that to really take next the next steps in your career that you had to be able to do that. that there was very few, um, if any, um, guys made it to the top without being able to to do an interview or, or cut a promo. So um, I knew it was some, some a part of my game that I really needed to work on. You know, when I got the chance, I just tried to be uh, myself. And luckily, I had Adam with me at the time, and we just kind of did this, the the, uh, the things that we thought were funny that we were doing backstage or in our everyday life just you know goofing off and being trying to be you know witty and funny and, and we figured hey if it's making us laugh maybe it'll make uh, other people laugh too so when we got the opportunity we just uh, started doing that on camera and it, and it, and it worked and it stuck and uh, it got me uh, more confidence as far as, as doing it on, on TV and in front of crowds and, and people and doing live uh, promos and things like that so it really helped me out. I met my wife in uh, in England, actually. At the, I was uh, I was wrestling in England. I actually got added to a pay per view there last minute, and uh, um, I remember it was after the show, and I was sitting in my room, and actually I turned on the TV, and there was a hockey game on. So I was like, I'll just sit here and watch the hockey game. Then I got hungry, and room service. I remember that it was going to take like an hour for me to get room service. So I said, you know what? Let's go down to the restaurant and get some deep. I went down. I started talking to somebody in the lobby, and I looked over and I saw this girl. Uh, walk in the lobby and I looked, I looked at the guy standing with us and said, that's the girl I'm going to marry right there. And he's like, get yeah, lost. I said, no, I'm serious. So that's, that's the girl I'm going to marry. And then uh, he said, go talk to her. I was like, no way. You know, I was really shy when it came to talking to girls and stuff like that. So I was like, forget it. So then uh, we ended up um, in the restaurant and he went over and started talking to her and her friends. And I came over and introduced myself and we just ended up sitting there and we ended up talking the whole night. And, and uh, turns out she, uh, she lived in Germany and she was, uh, she was visiting, you know, shopping with her friends and stuff like that, uh, doing a little shopping for the weekend in, in, uh, in England, making a little trip with her friends. And uh, we exchanged numbers and we talked on the phone for a couple months before we ever even saw each other again. And then um, I went over there. Uh, one time I had a little break and I went over there for, spent a little bit of time. And then she came over and we just kind of went back and forth like that for like two years. Uh, New Year's, 1999. Um, I proposed to my wife in the Bahamas and then uh, a little bit, about a year after that we got married and uh, the rest is history. You know, it's funny because, I mean, we never really had um, a regular relationship in the sense that I was home all the time. I mean, it started off strange anyway. I mean, we were two separate countries, you know. She, she was in Germany and at the time I was living in Canada and um, I was traveling all over the world. So, you know, it was, it was never normal from, from the get-go. 
and then we figured out oh, when you know when we we ended up buying a house and moving to Florida and then uh, we figured it'd be a little bit more normal but you know it's still hard when you're when you're up and you're gone all the time you know it's 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 still difficult but uh, you know the last year and a half when when I made the move to TNA you know the uh, schedule is a little more friendly for, uh, for as far as family life and, and home life goes so it's been great that I've actually got a chance to, to be home more and, and to, to be more with my wife and, and, and things like that and be able to visit family and have family down to visit and stuff like that so I mean in that respect it's been it's been uh, fantastic. You know what the honest, honest thing is, is I was on the road so much that I never really relaxed. That's the whole thing. I was used to being on the go so much that when I came home, I even had a hard time sitting down at home. And my wife would be like, can you just sit down for 10 minutes? Because I would sit down and try to watch TV, but then I'd get up and I'd realize that I had to do something. I'd go and you know, throw laundry in, or I'd go and check a, a bill or check my phone or you know, check something on the computer, whatever, whatever it is, you know, I, I just, I could never, I could never sit down, I, I never, I was like in the mode of I had to go all the time that I really found it hard to relax. And I really had to kind of retrain myself to be able to just kind of sit back and take some time to yourself and, and to kind of chill out a little bit. And everybody needs that to even, you know, kind of keep sane a little bit, you know, so um, it was really hard when I was on the road to, and, and you know, when, when being gone so much, I really look forward to those times when I got to my hotel room and it was just, I was by myself in my room and just watching Sports Center or reading the paper or or sometimes I bring my video game system with me and I throw it on there and I would just play some video games just unwind. That was that was my relaxation on the road and that was uh, you know, I really look forward to those times but it was it was hard and like I said it was kind of a retraining process to be able to allow myself to relax after that. Uh -huh. yeah well at the time I was uh, you know, I, I'd been there for a lot of years at the time, uh, about eight years, and uh, you know, I felt I'd, I'd come a long way, and um, uh, the fans were, were really starting to, to take to me in a different way, and starting to react to me in different ways than I'd ever heard before. And uh, I was always under the, the tried to live by the rule of uh, um, let the fans decide who they, who they want to see and who they don't want to see. And um, I felt that I was getting reactions, whether they were I was getting cheered or getting booed, they were reacting to me very strongly at the time. And I felt the people that, that I was in the ring with um, at the time, I was wrestling guys like Shawn Michaels and, uh, and guys like Chris Jericho, um, uh, you know, guys of, of that magnitude. And, and being in the ring with them and doing the things that I was doing, I knew I could, I could that I had what it took to, to, to be at that level and to stay at that level, that all I needed was the opportunity to stay there. And uh, for some reason, it wasn't, it wasn't happening at the time. And uh, um, I racked my brain about it a million times trying to figure out you know, what, what more I, I had to do or, or, or whatever, and I, and I couldn't come to any good conclusion. And uh, um, you know, I, th I think the fans wanted to see me at a different level too. And, uh, and I think that, um, you know, for, like I said, for whatever reason, it wasn't happening, and I think they, they felt, I think the fans felt that, that it should happen. I knew it should happen, and, uh, and it didn't, and, and that's fine, but everything happens for a reason. And at the time, you know, I was, I was burnt out from being on the road so much, and I was, I was, I was tired mentally and physically. I was beat up, and um, plus the other things that were going on, I was, I was starting to become a little bit bitter. And I don't like being a bitter person, and I, I didn't want to become bitter because, you know, I, I actually, you know, had a great career there and when I look back on my time there I want to look back on it and smile and say man that was a great time in my life I didn't want to look back and say man I hate that place blah 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 I didn't want to be that guy and I didn't want to bring anybody down in the locker room or anything like that so my contract was coming up and I just said you know what it might be time for a fresh start somewhere else and just uh, shake hands and part ways and and, uh, and, and do what I have to do to, to further my career and um, so that's what I decided to do and, and uh, that's how I went about it. This is what we've been